Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel and Ave Caesar. Because today I'm going to be showing you this post-apocalyptic dystopian futuristic Roman helmet, which is one of my most intricate builds to date. I will show you a couple of making of pictures, although this video is not a full making of, and I will be talking about the design aspects as well as handicrafting challenges and the solutions I found to them. So let's begin by taking a look at some finished pictures. So it all started with a paper sketch. You can also see a bit of metal here, because uh, I just had cut this metal plate just to see whether or not I can bend a metal plate like this. Turned out later, no I can't, at least not in one piece. I will get to that later. But the rest is just paper sketch. And the base for this is a Russian uh, tank driver's helmet, or um, sub-helmet, basically like a padded helmet which just prevents the tank drivers from bumping their head on all the stuff that is inside the tank. And after that I have scanned all of the parts. You don't see all of the parts here obviously, just as an example. I've just put them on a scanner and those sharp outlines I've uh, retraced them in Photoshop just so that I can see where exactly the outlines are. And then I have translated it into a fusion sketch and from there I have just uh, exported the uh, vector files and had them laser cut. The two steps that some people might not understand. So Fusion is a CAD program which allows you to create CAD drawings as, as well as CAD 3D models. You can of course use any other program and if you're not using any CAD programs at all and are not interested, obviously this is nothing for you. But I wanted really clean shapes here something that looks really technologically advanced, so I went with this approach. As for having it laser cut, I have just uh, searched online for a company which uh, does this in Germany. There are plenty, so I've just sent them the vector files, uh, paid the fees, and they have sent me the laser cut parts. And here they are. So there you see the tank helmet with Mr. Head inside of it back before Mr. Head had the, his cool dark green paint he has now. Uh, and those right here are bottoms of steel bowls. And I did uh, not end up using these parts, which were supposed to be for the ears, because as you see in the final, uh, the ears look great as they do without the additional protrusion to the sides. So a bit slimmer, more aggressive profile. So after receiving my parts, I have applied a distressing technique to them, as I usually uh, do, the same technique as you can see in my metal armor video. And after that, I have started assembling the parts. So right here you can see that uh, just a couple of parts are attached. Actually, just this is attached, the side part. The uh, big top part, I did not attach it up until the end because it makes uh, the whole build just so much less wieldy to work on. So attaching this was the last part. But a couple of things you see here. This effect right here is basically a layered effect. So we have this aluminum piece on top, which is now hammered and bent and all that with a surface effect, same as here. Inside of that, uh, or underneath that, we have a layer of um, mesh. It's mesh aluminum, 
actually pretty thin, can be even cut by scissors. And underneath that, you cannot see it here, but you can see it here, because here I've skipped the mesh part, there is some uh, ABS sheet. I did not have the ABS sheet uh, laser cut, because that would have involved you know, an additional operational, an additional order, possibly from a different company, uh, just for this piece. So what I did is uh, retrace it later and just cut it on my scroll saw. A bit further down into the development process, so the whole technique basically repeats itself here. And by the way, I've uh, shown this technique in more detail in my uh, arm guard video or VAM brace video. Watch that one if you haven't yet. So the technique repeats itself in the sense that it's all, uh, you know, first the flat parts are hammered and sandpapered and spray painted and all that. Uh, and after that, they're bent to shape. I've decided to go with a two-sided uh, shape for uh, the forehead right here. And it's held uh, together by this piece in the middle, by the nose piece. The reason for that is that I did not know exactly how wide I want to have it, because the paper sketch is nice, but there is always some play that you might want to account for. And if you have one solid piece, you might end up with these parts just covering your eyes or the opening being too wide, whatever. As you can see here, I have just used some uh, slim belts to interconnect those parts. So uh, while the whole build looks rather... Uh, technologically advanced, that's mostly from the shape of those precision cut parts. The rest, uh, everything beneath it, the way I've mounted it, obviously I didn't deliberately try to make it all skewed and all that, but it's not like super duper precise uh, laser cut stuff as the plates are. I've just assembled it the, you know, the usual way. I try to be as precise as possible, but a bit of improvisation occurs here and there. And it, it's all fine in the end. Also, all the components, uh, all the elements of this move around a bit because they're uh, mounted as fragments instead of one solid piece on a soft base on that Russian tank driver's helmet. So here you see that it's already a bit more assembled than it was before. And I've also added some uh, cables to the ears. So it goes here in the front into the air piece. But, but you can st still see that this is not finished. Like, this is close to finished, but not quite. And this is actually where a lot of people stop. Why? I don't know. Like, yeah, it looks cool already, but go on, do the full thing. Here it's almost finished, added some decorations to the front, uh, lacking the final layers of grunge, as well as some final detail, especially over the ear right here, which I have then added in. So you can see how much difference this makes. Just some final grunge effects and just some final text effects, but it makes a huge difference. As I said, all the methods used here are shown in my other videos, uh, specifically in the metal armor video and the Vembrace video. My consideration process for this build was like, fuck no, I'm not making a dome. <laughs> I first uh, tried using those uh, dishes, um, as the dome, but it didn't work, it didn't have the right curvature, so I've decided to cut them up for ears. And the most important part is really the first ugly sketch, right here, from paper. Because once you have that down, all you need to do is, well, everything else, but it's the most deciding step for how the whole thing is gonna look. And I will address the design elements of this. Alright, details and design decisions in no particular order. So you can see right here that there is an interplay of different uh, hole elements. For example, the holes up here, they have this black ABS plastic inside of them, while these holes have this mesh part and ABS plastic beneath it, while this, again, just has some plastic without the mesh and here we again see a mesh. So it's a visual rhythm. So mesh, no mesh, mesh, no mesh, also no mesh here. Because too much mesh would have looked a bit weird. So I've decided to change it up a bit. You also see that the basic shapes that I'm using here are also interplaying with each other. We have triangles up here. We have circles 
and then again we have triangles inside of a circle. So those are the two basic shapes going on here and obviously it doesn't need to be 100% either triangle or circle all over the freaking place. As you can see here, I'm breaking this up a bit, but this is basically like an elongated circle, if you will, with the rounded uh, edges here. While this is kind of a, like a mutated triangle, so it's still roughly playing with those circle and triangle things, shapes. The next thing you will see is a complementary contrast, and it's a three-way complementary contrast. So here you see the red of the crest contrasting with the blue of the wire. Then we have this red again as an echo. By the way, those big triangles and those small triangles are also creating an echo. And here you see that this ear part is painted in uh, with some uh, army dark olive paint. And of course the biggest complementary contrast would be to the wearer's uh, presumed uh, greenish tones um, in some of their clothing, like you can see on me right now. So red is obviously a good choice for me. I love red highlights. And also this was, um, well, this is a Roman build, so I wanted to have some red in it. Now, I didn't want to make the entire crest red. This is why I've created this effect, where the paint is uh, fading out. So for that, I have just sprayed it only from this side. And then I've uh, also polished away some of the paint so it looks naturally chipped away. Um, the reason I've chosen to, uh, for it to be down here and not up there is... I, I don't have a logical explanation, it's just a gut feeling that it looks nicer when it sits further down below. Now, I didn't want to add too much red to it, because for one, um, it would be covering up the metal, and I really like uh, the metal look. And also it is made from real metal, so I want to show that fact off. Um, at the same time, uh, yeah, a helmet that is too red. Uh, I mean, it could have a nice aesthetic, yes. But I just wanted it to be uh, not too much in your face in terms of colors. Now let's just move on. Uh, here you can see some insignia. So those are... Uh, Russian army insignia for no particular reason other than that I have a ton of them from Russia uh, and that's why I've used them here and I think it really fits with those wings and stuff and yes the one in the center of it is anachronistic but again if we think about that this is like a futuristic Roman build from a uh, fictional world I can do whatever I want and if you want it to conjure a logical explanation for that um, you just have to think about uh, United States of America today. So uh, they're still using feet, while at the same time they're uh, using tons and they're uh, using, probably they also use some worldwide metric units as well. Uh, but I think the same uh, thing would happen with the uh, Romans, or could happen with the Romans, uh, had the Roman Empire continued. So they would probably adapt the more uh, practical Arabic numerals, it's not like Arabic numerals were unheard of even back then. Uh, so they would adapt them at some point because they're just so much easier to use. Uh, while for traditional purposes, um, or maybe in the general population, they would still keep using uh, Roman numbers. I also have some uh, Roman numbers right here with no particular meaning. And probably uh, it doesn't uh, really spell anything that makes sense, but looks Roman, whatever, you know. Doesn't need to be super historically accurate for me because this is fantasy. Maybe in the military applications or high-tech industry they would have Arabic numerals. In the traditional and general population uh, they would have still the Roman uh, numbers. So here is the comms. This is actually just some sort of an audio cable, um, just, you know, by chance, not that I needed it to be an audio cable. It doesn't really do anything except looking cool, like it's not non-functional, but the idea behind this was, and I've, I've drilled the hole here and just plopped it in and super glued and taped it from the other side, so it, with a lot of force you can still pull it out if you really want to. So the idea behind this was that the, there is a microphone that sits here and that goes to the earpiece which um, 
is a relay for the microphone signal and at the same time the earpiece so there is some uh, communication electronics in this which is why it's also marked as uh, Vox, comms, blah blah something something uh, and from the earpieces the blue cables go to the back here and what I uh, made this from is just whatever kind of electronics I found so I wanted some sort of a transmitter looking thing uh, obviously this entire build looks like it's not really the brand new model of this helmet it looks more like something you know maybe after the fall of the neo-roman empire someone finds their grandpa's uh, legionnaire helmet and wants to pimp it up a bit you know tune it up doesn't have the cover for the electronics but still makes it work somehow so uh, th this was actually also, uh, well, for one uh, part it's easier to make uh, for me than uh, something that looks completely brand new and for the other part at the same time it adds some story and some history to the piece. So obviously uh, the electronics cover is missing. The reason I've angled the electronics like this is uh, when you're wearing it and lean your head backwards. This is about as much as you would want to tilt your head backwards and this is where it actually stops. Uh, talking about which, we're at the neck cover and here is some uh, yeah, lettering as you've seen in the pictures before. Tiberius Aurelius of the Legion 4, which is just stuff I came up with. So maybe it belonged to the Tiberius Aurelius and then his grandchild finds it and, you know, goes on to rebuild the Roman Empire. So here uh, we have those protective plates. What I hoped it would do is be three-dimensional and be able to wrap around the neck like this while at the same time bending like this. It didn't happen, uh, but I uh, was not bothered by it too much, so I left it just like this because it still looks cool with those uh, segments. Uh, just for practicality purposes, those could have been just straight bars here, but this just looks so much more intricate. And on the bottom here, I have uh, a piece of uh, ABS plastic, uh, which I've bent using some uh, hot air fan, um, hot air gun. Uh, to bend it into shape so it supports this uh, neck piece so it doesn't curl up like this. So when you wear it, it uh, doesn't, doesn't bother you in the neck. Moving on down here, there is a chin strap, which is elastic. And the way you put on this helmet is actually fairly simple. First of all, I will put on a uh, wool hat because my head is a tiny bit too small for this to wear it comfortably. It fits in nicely, but I need a bit more friction and it holds, holds by friction alone. So to put this on, I flip it over like this, put the neck cover here and then I will push my head inside of this. Hope you guys can see it. Yeah. So I have it on my head like this now and then I just push down. There we go. So this is held in place by friction. Yeah! Roman Empire! Fuck yeah! So this is what it looks like on me. So that's how you put this on and off. Quite easy. And I like designs like this, which you can just slip in and out of, while they still really hold tight as you move. And if you want to know how I made those uh, text effects in the metal, uh, I have a separate short video about that called uh, Industrial Metal Effect for Soft Metals. It's basically using letter punches. So you don't even have to watch the video if you know what letter punches are. And the only thing I can advise you on leather punches for builds like this or anything else is you have to do your text first. After you have mounted your piece onto the padding, there is no chance of you making a text effect like this. So you plan it out in advance. Now some technical challenges. I've mentioned that it was difficult to make this piece as one piece. So as you can see, I've added a cut here later on and that is to relieve the tension of it because um, I could have probably hammered it into the right shape but again come on the same reason why I didn't want to make the dome I've just uh, winged it uh, and actually winging it is something that um, people frown upon a lot of times and are not sure whether or not they should do it but 
actually like when prototyping which is basically what I do with all the unique builds more than 50% of the time you're gonna be winging it so a good ability to wing it, it is worth more than uh, even some trained and solid techniques which you use again and again or at least worth say much just for different situations so what was happening here is just it was pressing on, on my head in a weird way when it was one piece and it was contracting the hat it, it was just not good so by relieving the tension by making a cut here it kind of worked out a lot better Obviously another technical challenge in quotation marks was uh, just how tedious it was to assemble the whole thing with that many bolts and you know making all the parts fit together so it's not all completely screwed. Uh, you can see that it's it still has some some play obviously because it's just a bunch of loose parts mounted on a soft hat. But I think that's a cool thing. Kind of adds another dimension to it. Uh, as far as protective value of this goes, assuming it was made of steel, it would give you some protection obviously, but as with all the segmented things, it is just not uh, as good as one solid piece. But again, this was made primarily to look cool, not to give you actual protection, <laughs> because if we're talking practicality, someone might grab you by this, and even on a windy day, you're gonna have a bad time, so... You know, not very practical uh, for a combat helmet, but still very practical for a prop, because I just hate it when uh, my props are uncomfortable to wear. So as far as props go, this is actually comfortable to wear, especially with a hat for me. So the friction is just the right amount. All right, I could talk about this helmet and show you even more of its features for an hour or so more, but I think this will be enough for a nice and not too super long video like I did a couple of last times. So, uh, thanks for watching, I hope this video was entertaining and helpful for you. If so, then share it with your tribe. And also, if you're a regular viewer, then please support me on Patreon, because my Patreon supporters are the only ones who are truly true to the Roman Empire, and by that I mean the only ones who keep this channel going and developing. Because as a small-time YouTuber, which I am, you don't earn anything, almost anything at all. With YouTube nowadays, I never earned a lot with YouTube anyway, so my Patreon supporters are the bee's knees, are the mud snots, are the best of the best, are the bravest legionnaires, and so on and so forth. Anyway, I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, hail the snail. Ave Caesar! Snailus, Dominus, Magnus, Imperator, Snailus, Dominus, Magnus Imperator. La 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la. Mm -hmm.